and hello everybody this is tyler again and i am back with shapes.io uh, as you can see i put a little bit of time into it outside of the last recording uh, so it's been about a day since i played the save file for this one but uh, i did a good job of trying to learn how to more efficiently set things up so i may end up coming into this one and seeing what I can do about making things a little bit better. Uh, right now, obviously, it was like our circles, the red ones are just kind of slow at this moment. So this might be a good point to talk about some optimizations that I could start getting a part of. Let's see. Uh, Right now, we're just using those two to make circles. Okay, so let's get rid of this. And we'll go ahead and bring that back over here. But then. That way, we can just focus it all into one belt. And then we will just kind of drag stuff off. To here because like here soon what I might do is actually do what I did in my personal game and start creating a better bossing scene. Uh, so if you're not familiar when you play a lot of games like this like especially Factorio one big thing that you always or that I always did at least was you create a main bus so you just get as many materials as you can and you kind of try and keep that bus saturated with materials. So in this case, it's the shapes and our colors. And just to make sure I have a little bit more space, we're going to just extend it down over here. And this is what I figured out so far is the best for condensed setups when it comes to uh, doing painting stuff. So what we do is we're going to take our splitters and have one going into here and then we're just going to allow them to continue on like this and since we don't have anything we need to worry about going through we can just do that and this is about as condensed as I can get it set up right at this point um, I might figure out some better system later but you know, that's the fun part about these games. You play for a bit and you go, oh, okay. I know how things just fit better together. Because I was going to notice with that original setup I had here, especially a lot of this stuff right now, especially since I've got a couple of the things unlocked, it I can do a lot better than what's going on right here. Because uh, as you'll notice, one, our current speed for the cutters is not fast enough to combat how many circles we have. Uh, and actually speaking of, if I wanted, I could make that a little bit faster even, but... But let's go ahead and just focus on the red circle since that's our current objective. And as you'll see, it's really just a lot of copy and paste at level 12, I believe, uh, which we're at level 7 right now. You will unlock blueprints, which you can then use to actually more quickly copy and paste, as you would expect in blueprints. Uh, so right now, I'm just kind of stuck to building everything by hand, but luckily, since I have the process laid out, it's not that hard. And bend it out one more like that. And so I've got two of the extractors over here so those should keep at least maybe four saturated right now that's going to be my next step in all of this is figuring out how to actually uh, balance the saturation of belts i was like because obviously it's going to change since 
we're constantly getting new upgrades for things, but I do think that there's probably some sort of system I can figure out for how many I should have of each thing. But for right now we'll just do four. And we'll set those all up and yep. here in a little bit I'll actually unlock a merger so I can take two lanes and combine into one which will make this much better but right now I am going to just do what I'm doing with the rest of the stuff and condense it all into one belt which obviously not as optimal as I would like it to be, but we will change that before you know it. If only it worked like Factory with the, you could just have the materials go into a single belt, but that is okay. Go up like this. And now that it's all on one belt, we'll just bring it back under here. There's it. So, I mean, right now it's going to definitely be a little bit spaghetti tracks, but. It's just so much nicer to see that number go up so much quicker than it has been. And obviously it's going to slow down because our mixers are still pretty slow. Uh, so let's see if we can focus on trying to upgrade that. So we'll go with similar setups as before. Use the mergers to split it all onto one track. And... Let's do same thing. Let's say here. Uh, so as you can tell, I'm getting a little bit quicker with how I'm actually building everything. Uh, like I said, a lot of it really kind of came down to the fact that I I put a lot of time into it yesterday while chatting with some friends, uh, which is really what this game is perfect for, if you ask me. Uh, just take a moment to hang out and chat, play games, and see where it takes you, because you can probably come up with a lot of really interesting setups. And I know that there's a save import feature in this too, which means there's all sorts of potential for, uh, for like sharing things with your friends, especially if you know anyone who's actually like interested in playing these style games. I also appreciate it. It does a good it gives a good opportunity for being able to share like what you enjoy. And at the end of the day I think games are meant to do stuff like that. And as you'll notice I'm doing the same sort of setup that I did with our red circles. Just so that way, like I said, it's compact. And one of the nicest things is once you start being able to look out on the board, uh, you'll have like nice bus systems. Like I love the look of this on the board because it's just nice and neat, nice and organized. Uh, ignoring this bit, but like I said, it'll get better when you get the mergers. So. And the other nice benefit is once you set up like your main goal or whatever you're working on, you start working on something else and before you know it, you actually have something else completed. And you have maybe a new tool to work with. Uh, and I was like, and it's interesting because I've figured out that this is the main style of uh, stuff that I end up doing, but like this kind of overall design, but sometimes it works out a little bit differently depending on the orientation of what it actually is. So like the cutter, since it's one in, two out, 
I can actually put those in a different setup just because I don't need as much or I, I don't need or it's not one directional like this so I'll show you when I actually split these squares because in order to get the mixing and painting upgrade it's got to be like that and speaking of yeah let's go ahead and finish this one first just so that way we can start getting some blue squares built up because as you notice, for this goal right here, which is our current main one, uh, we'll unlock counterclockwise rotations, which will be good for not having to rotate a thing multiple times. Because uh, right now, if I wanted something to turn to the left, I have to rotate it three times to the right. But obviously it'll kind of fix itself once we get that next upgrade. And as long as I do it right, I can always expand upon this whenever I need to. I was like, if I ever want, I can just either slot in a new input or just keep building on this way. And as long as this belt remains saturated and these splitters will catch up fast enough, it should always stay saturated in order to actually keep building what I needed to. And we'll just connect them back together like this. And I guess I'll try work for the blue squares, but that's fine. Mm. So, now that we have that, yeah, we can go ahead and start cutting them. And obviously, same deal, go ahead and split half of them into there, and then, so, just double check, we need right side half blue squares. So, if we want this to be here. There you go. So I've got those two, and then we can just use this to reconnect them, so that way we're not throwing away any trash like we are with these kind of setups over here, or at least these ones over here. And we can go ahead and be another one obviously the rotators I believe are still instant while the cutters obviously take time so if we can make it a little bit faster that's always going to be appreciated and we can just go ahead and split off our product and we just need to split off from the main belt and same process again So let's just go ahead and stick with those two right now. Like I said, one side feels like if I ever want to, I can just go ahead and keep expanding it because uh, it is future future proof. Maybe that's the word for it. Uh, I don't know, but it's just it's always expandable. And obviously, for these kind of games, you want stuff to be expandable pretty much as much as you can. Oh, never mind. There is that. It does not help to just build completely the wrong way. And we'll just go ahead and put those into there. And now that will start going up. And I also really like the setup of this because I just realized you can change the icons to use squares. Uh, and then you can actually see better how everything lines up with one another. So here it shows you everything that's being produced and then it shows you what's actually being delivered to the center. 
and then we can see our backlog of what's actually being stored. Nice, and now we're a little bit closer to... Uh, we can just take the L on these. I messed up, so that's fine. But now, we only have a couple more, and we will have counterclockwise rotating. Which isn't going to really help us here, uh, just because we need to rotate it the one side to be flipped, which we don't have yet, but um, I think the one thing I also really enjoyed was the fact that even though it says that, or only though there's this many icons, there's also a variance of, that will unlock. Uh, so like my personal playthrough, we get a chain extractor, which you can have them all uh, go into one another and then have one output, since obviously you can only saturate the belt so much with their beginning speeds. Alright, so now that we got blue squares working, I think a good idea is to get ourselves some of uh, these, which I am going to call either stars or pinwheels. I was like, I say star because they look like uh, like ninja stars, like shurikens. And that might be one star. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and pull from this source right here. And just go one, two, three, and branch that all onto the same one. And we'll just bring it straight on over back to here. And there we go. So those will start producing things just when we need it. And we should get to 1k pretty quickly. Give it a little bit of time for that to normalize. So, right now we already have our blue square set up. Let's actually go ahead and just expand upon that right quick to make it a little bit faster. And we could do that. And just another setup. Um. And there we go. And we'll go ahead and just have you meet up back at the center again. And this is going to be a little weird looking, but... There we go. And effectively doubled it. Now, obviously, we're running into a little bit of issues when they merge in like here because birds are being produced, and then when they both happen to meet up, it tries to distribute them evenly. Uh, but you'll see that number is climbing actually pretty quickly, which is not bad. All right, so. We got that. We're already about halfway to 1,000 of the stars. And obviously one of the other things we want to work on is so we're only delivering about 190 of these a minute. 
which obviously we we want to try and make as many come into our center as possible. So let's go ahead and I think we're going to delete all of our current circle production. And let's see if we can do something a little bit better. Obviously this is going to stop our red circles too, but since I'm okay with this setup, I'll just leave it here for right now. One, two, three, four. One, two. Have a meet up again in the center. So we want to deliver regular circles, bottom half circles, upright circles. First, we can just have this split off and go straight into there. We're taking roughly order-ish of what we're actually producing and just having it straight there. And then the rest will go into what gets cut. So and I'm just gonna go ahead and in these two so that way I don't have to keep coming back to this menu. Now we can do the same type of setup. So split on into here. And if we want, we can just do E to toggle that. So that's already producing down. And yeah, so should we? This is where it gets into interesting stuff for me because, oh look, and we got the, oh cool, and this is now color mixing. So there's, it's additive color mixing and the graphic here actually shows you what you can combine to get what colors. And a new upgrade, so now cutting will be faster. But uh, as I was saying, the interesting thing about these style or this style of setup is figuring out how much it will actually be balanced out. If I wanted, I could have everything contribute to being just down half circles, which I might do so that way I can focus those on that and then end up moving to maybe like this resource node and developing the top right circles and I can have all of it focused on just that. So a lot of it really kind of depends on if you're interested in building long resource chains that will do a little bit of everything or focusing each node for one specific focus. Uh, I obviously haven't figured out what's good or not just because I've not put enough time into this but as mentioned it's a pretty sizable amount. So let's just, yeah, let's go ahead and go with the first thought I had where we just dedicate everything, except for obviously this little bit that's going off, just dedicate everything on here just to the bottom half circles. And another upgrade is ready. Cool. So mixing and painting will be faster too. And now all we got to do is bring that back onto one belt. and then we can merge it together and there you go and obviously as normal this is just going to be expandable as much as i want it to be so let's just get at least two of these for right now one, two, one that way and one that way bring you back up And that will just make that up easier for later. And there we go. So now you'll see, since these cut relatively quickly, this gets saturated pretty quickly. And 
once that settles down, we should be able to see how much we're actually going to be delivering per minute. So, just from that setup alone, it's delivering pretty quickly. Uh, just from having four extractors and two cutters, which is not bad in my opinion. Uh, and yeah, there we go. So it dropped down. So I mean, 200 just from this, but that's because each circle can be cut into two. And then we're having four pieces cut pretty much on a per second basis. Uh, yeah, so one item per second. All right. So we got that. Now let's dedicate this set of circles. And we're going to do a similar thing. And I've figured out that for the most part, when it comes to setting things up, doing left to right is just much easier for me visually than up and down. So go ahead and split. We're going to do that. And then we want to just go ahead and have them rotate. And then we're going to just cut them again. And we're actually going to split them because they'll need to be cut. Actually, but we need top right, so. There we go. So we'll just do that. Have them meet back up. And we'll do this one more time. That way we can have hopefully an ample supply of circles that we need. At least a half circles, because what we're going to do is cut in half. The left side is going to need to be rotated to the right, and the right side will be fine, and then all of those can just be set back to base. And go ahead and get rid of that, because that's been taken care of. And so we'll do two. Go ahead and do four for this one. One, two. So one and one, one and one, and there we go. So now that we have that going on, we want to go ahead and ah, uh, this might be too close together. Speaking of, what's actually the next unlock? The contact balancing? Okay, so that's actually the merger I was talking about earlier, which will be pretty helpful for situations like this, but uh, right now... Yeah, I think I need to move everything one more, because they need to be... Oh, no, never mind. I'm just done. Because they would all just spit out like that. Okay, well. Then let's rebuild it just like we had it before. Sometimes that's just what happens. I wish there was like a an undo button. <laughs> as I am prone to just placing things in the wrong spot. But it happens to the best of us, you know. Sometimes it just is what it is. And as long as we just put that there. Think of that. Cut them again. 
and push them through. And as long as we merge everything, we can just draw from the top one because it'll force all of the inputs to go out onto one belt. And as you see, pretty compact setup yet again. And now all we have to do is merge them onto one belt. And we can do a similar process to get our top rights. And it's nice when you can always set up right where things actually like happen to line up pretty evenly. Now, go ahead and go up and over, and I think that's probably good there. And we just need you to rotate, and now we've got And we'll just do that a couple more times. Do that, yeah. I so look forward to being able to have the blueprints because it'll make it much easier to just share the share the same layout amongst uh, multiple different parts of the factory. And I figure probably we should scale it so we have as many cutters for quarters as we have cutters for the halves. And that should probably keep it at least in a somewhat balanced state. Since we'll have nothing else coming from, or we'll have nothing else like really using the main circles. Since it's got a dedicated supply here. And this game is really good for, like I said, the music just works so nicely. Uh, I genuinely enjoy the like simplistic portion of it. Nice and relaxing. As I do the same task over and over and over again. Really, I don't know about you, but sometimes that's just the most fun, is doing repetitive tasks while not really th thinking too hard about it. You just get a chance to relax and really just kind of zone out for a bit. There we go. And now... They will meet. They'll meet back up again at the center, and we just bring it back to the base. There we go. And it this. <laughs> This specific thing always reminds me of, um, you know, like those arcades you used to go to as a kid, like Chuck E. Cheese's and whatnot, where you get all the tickets and then all of a sudden you're like, all right, time to exchange them for whatever points, and they just, the machine just slurps them up. All I can imagine is that, like, exact paper noise of just them shredding through as they go into the, the center. And there you go. So it took a little bit to catch up, but as you'll see, quite a few of the top rights are being produced just from these four. So once we get faster belts, we could upgrade this, but right now this is actually pretty good.
Uh, there's a lot of opportunities for doing the math on this too if you wanted. Because it tells you the rates at how many items it does a second. So like, we cut one item a second, but then it's getting two products. So two, four, six, eight. So it's roughly doing eight a second, which is how many that can be pushed along by the spell. And it's just really interesting how like that's such an easy flow to really understand. And speaking of, now we'll actually be cutting even quicker. So we'll be producing 16 parts a second from these four which is faster than what our belts can handle, so you'll notice that it'll actually start to back up already. Uh, and since this is further ahead on the supply line than this one, this will back up first because this is producing more than what can currently be put onto a belt. But there you go, so like I said, there's a lot of interesting parts for making sure that you're getting the most out of your setup. And even now, you'll see that there's a lot of saturation on this belt. Uh, but we need to maybe do some more saturation on this belt to make sure that we meet the demands that we need. Which, like I said, will get better once we get to the, uh, the compact balancer where we can actually like merge things better. And then the chain extractor, which will heavily increase these and we can have it all just come out from one output but okay so you'll notice that the next objective is for purple circles and so what we need to do is let's find blue's kind of far away okay so let's go ahead and start making some purple dye. So we'll go ahead and get this up here first to our blue. And one, two, three. And we'll go ahead and get four. That way everything should be nice and even and we'll have them all output onto one belt. Alright, so I'm showing you the painter for making the different colored part. Now here's how the mixer works. We combine two colors into one and luckily like I said this has a guide so we know if you're not familiar with how colors mix, blue and red make purple. Uh, in this color system, all three colors combined together will make white, uh, blue and green make cyan, and red and green make yellow. And just simple color mixing. So like I said, it was like anytime you ever need to, it just, you've got a guide right there because they put the overlapping circles, which I think is a pretty good idea. Um, so you notice I use a similar approach that I've used before. We just... We take our two belts and we split them. So we've got one blue going in here, one red going here, purple comes out. And all we gotta do is just do that a few times. And just as a disclaimer, if you happen to pick this game up yourself, let me know what you think. Uh, I think that Seeing other people play it would, one, just be very nice, and two, feel free to share your ideas for maybe more efficient setups or if there's anything that you think that I'm missing uh, in playing this. There's a pretty good chance that there's some sort of mechanic that I've missed just from the little bit that I've been kind of messing around, but I will never know until someone tells me something, and I'm always down for interacting and being able to hear more people who are interested in games. So, normally in uh, Greek mythology, if you're familiar, things go by groups of three. I, for some reason, like doing groups of four. Uh, I just feel like that might make it a little bit nicer, even though 
I don't really have any rhyme or reason, it's just I guess closer to power of twos when it comes to efficiency and computers, but whether or not that actually means anything, I don't know. It's just kind of how my brain works and I like it better, especially since even numbers will help us keep one and two like this. And yet again, we can just saturate the belt. Make sure everything goes on to one. And there we go. So now we'll just keep producing purples. And so, oh yeah, and you can give markers to your, your map. So if you ever want to like label things for easy use later, that's always, always pretty helpful. So we've got our purples and luckily we have a convenient source of squares. So I'm going to draw from here, and like I said, nothing new. There we go. And let's see, so, oh shit, we need circles. Obviously, purple squares are not going to be helpful if we're trying to make purple circles. So let's look for purple source. Okay, so those are a little bit further away. Let's go ahead and delete the belt going this way. And instead, pipe it back over to here. Where we can then draw off of here for the circles that we need. For our purple circles. There we go. And we'll just go ahead and line it up and cross the belt over onto the other side. So that way I can keep going with that same setup that I was showing earlier. So all we do is one and two. Make sure that the input is like that. And now we just rinse and repeat yet again. And did not see that we missed this upgrade, but there we go. So now our extractors will have doubled in speed, which is pretty useful for keeping the belt saturated, as I've mentioned before. Uh, right now we've got plenty of those. Let me go ahead and double check what we're actually delivering. Okay, so we're delivering basic squares and basic circles. And so you'll notice that this is working faster, so we will deliver slightly more basic circles here. Uh, if we wanted, we could just set up a direct input to go ahead and just bring direct circles on their own belt, but since they take a little bit of a backseat, since we can build up so much more of them while we're getting other things prepped, that's okay for right now. And I think the only thing that we're missing is... Oh, Red Circles was only for that one upgrade, so I wonder if we need them anymore or not, but... I guess we're not too, too worried about it since it's not an active pull, but... That may be a fun goal for later, just trying to see how many of each shape and what different types of shapes you can make even beyond the scope of your upgrades, since as you'll notice the shapes get more and more kind of complex. Uh, as you'll notice this one, this one looks a little bit more like an actual pinwheel since it's got the slanted corners, uh, but you'll notice that it's half that, half square. so. For this goal, we'll actually eventually have to cut it and then rotate it, dye it, and sew it back together. But, like I said, that's for a little bit later, and you have shapes like this where it's like half square, half circle, and they just obviously keep generating, so you've got plenty of time to experiment and look into what you can actually do with those. So let's get back on track with building ourselves some of these. There we go. And 
18. And we'll go ahead and follow the same format of having four of them. Just so that way, one, I believe everything should just bounce out pretty well. Go like that. Put everything up as normal. And now that's four. And we can just leave it like that for right now. Go ahead and combine everything yet again. And now we just need to bring it all back to the hub. Eventually the plan will be making sure that everything kind of ends up being more organized because obviously I want I don't fully want to just have all of my conveyor belt showing and just running over random things that we could be making use of but obviously that's a little bit of the luxury that you come you come across when you have an infinitely generated map because all it takes is just doing more setup uh, so you can afford to miss out on like green and just basic circles and whatnot but and there we go so as you notice this isn't staying as saturated because the mixers and painters are only at three times speed while the cutters and stackers are at four and especially since we've done some other upgrades uh, our mixing painting is a little bit behind but that's just because we can't actually do anything more to upgrade it we just got the squares that we needed but we couldn't actually do anything with putting them back together yet because we haven't unlocked it. So... Yeah, I think that'll do for right now. Let's see what else of the upgrades we would need. Okay, so in the same vein, if we wanted to, we could do... We could start focusing on getting cyan, uh, like, stars, just because we're going to also need the lower half for the green later, or for whatever you want to call this, but... Let's see. We're actually delivering half squares. Yes, so we're getting 200, yeah, 200 of those a minute. So we know that we're making these, 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 these. It so only leaves these three for us to focus on actually making right now. So let's go ahead and make ourselves some cyan stars. And where am I? I think, yeah, so they're currently coming from there. We've got close sources of both blue and green, so why don't we start off with a new series of extractors. Go ahead and pull these down, and then we will do the same setup that we did earlier by combining uh, both our green and blue to make cyan. And I really feel like games like this are just very much meant to scratch that like that specific itch of just creating something that just 
works. Um, obviously, since I'm new to this, I've not really talked about it, but I did engineering work for four years uh, in high school, and I've always really enjoyed creating things. Uh, and even though right now, as a college student, I'm working on actually working on video games as a as my primary interest. Uh, there's still a lot of that same enjoyment that comes from uh, that comes from creating, and it's just obviously video games are very heavily creative as well. They're just not in the same way as you would with engineering. However, I've learned a lot of those skills really come in handy when it comes to uh, when it comes to certain things like. I did a lot of CAD modeling, and modeling game characters is pretty, like, the scares, you know, the skills carry over really well. Now, obviously, having to learn how to do, like, texturing and stuff like that, uh, rigging and animating, a completely different world, however, like I said, you have those fundamentals, and once you get those fundamentals, it's fun to learn how to apply it to other things. And that's the biggest reason why I enjoy games like Factorio, Factorio and this. Uh, I've also played like Factory Town if you haven't heard of it. I would recommend that if you like these style of games. That one's a little bit more like kind of like Banished meets Factorio, if you've ever played Banished, which obviously if you haven't, but that analogy is not really going to help all that well, but uh, the main basis is that it's more of like a colony survival, but as opposed to having to worry about you call it like colonists dying, you instead are trying to make them as happy as possible and then obviously profit. So, let's go ahead and bust this on over here. We're going to just bust these around the outside, so that way we don't end up running into constraints by running into some other form of Uh, like some other form of trains that we're working on. Because right now we can still expand this a little bit before we run to here, but if we started building over here, we would also still run out of space. So over here just makes it a little bit easier. And I need to actually make sure I'm still setting it up consistently. And there we go. One, two. And now we just got to dye them like we've been doing. And there you go. Like I said, it was like once you figure out that kind of more compact designs, you just very quickly can figure out how to apply it to other setups. And so there we go. So I just unlocked the balancer, uh, which are they refer to it as the compact balancer, but it's also a merger. So, yeah, so I'll actually show you what I mainly have been using it for once I finish building out this. Because it just makes the overall aesthetic of more compact setups so much nicer when you can do it right. So, that. Uh, you we'll do two more painters match the conveyor belts here three one two three and then we'll attach you and you Oh, 
I mess it up. Luckily, deleting things is actually pretty easy. Like I said, I am prone to errors, so I need to have one, two, three, four in between. One, two, three, four. I don't know how I miscounted that, but like I said, it stuff like that happens, so not the end of the world. Honestly, stuff like this too really just feels kind of like painting to some degree, if that makes sense. Like, just kind of laying out your basis and then implementing it and using the same skills over and over to get the desired effect that you're looking for. Cool, so there you go. We've got four built as per usual, and now... All I have to do is one, two, three, four, and then we get one belt to connect through these, and they all merge onto the same one. Because what it does is it takes uh, your main belt and then one input to put onto that main belt, and then uh, it pushes it out through the end, and it does the same thing that these do, but in one block instead of two, and you can have it come in from the sides as opposed to from the same direction. And luckily, that was actually our next goal, was to work on the cyan stars. There you go. So now, it'll just evenly distribute that. We got both of those saturating the belt pretty much as much as we can. Uh, obviously, if we wanted, we could just go like this and maybe get it done a little bit quicker, but there you go. And what's this next one? Okay, so this is the combiner that we're going to unlock next. So now that we've got those working out, we've got that. We've got two options. We can either start working on this or start working on this. Neither of these we can actually do right now. Uh, however, we could set up the framework so we can easily implement it once we get our combiner unlocked. So... I think right now, because this has a good enough backlog, let's expand upon this setup. One, two, three. No, I'm dumb. Oh, yeah. Need to count five, not four. So, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and add on three more. And now, because we have this, I don't have to worry as much about sticking to groups of two because everything will just merge on properly to one belt. Two, three. There we go. And follow, oh. That's one thing I also do a bunch of the time too, where it's like if you use something more than once, you just have to hold shift and then it'll let you do it instead of having to select the tool every time. But as mentioned, I constantly forget to do that, and instead I just end up forgetting and not actually really doing the thing that I want and having to click buttons multiple times and it's just a mess. There we go. And we'll just go ahead and continue on here so we get our spiky boys. Obviously the the better name for the diamonds, just spiky boys. And ah uh, yeah, I need to connect the paint. 
but there you go. So like I said, it was like, if you design it smartly, as with anything in these kind of games, you can just always expand it, and hopefully if I, do, if I wanted, I could do more, and I was like, if we need more, like, you know, it's the blue die is now starting to be, or the cyan die is now starting to be used faster, so then I could create more of these, and then if, as long as these can keep up the production to keep this saturated, then so on and so forth. I was like, it, since it's all using conveyor belts, it's actually pretty easy to kind of catch up with what you actually need to do to design, th design things properly. But, so now, let's go ahead and get rid of that input. And this will make this slower. Then that's always something you can do too, where if you want, uh, instead of having an equilibrium of things getting taken out into the system and things being put into the system, you can have things taken out of the system slightly slower, and eventually everything will back up and catch up. Uh, so now obviously we're going to actually be... We're going to be taking items and splitting it off of here because we're going to want to cut it uh, in preparation for this piece right here. So we're already about halfway to our goal, which is nice because obviously explaining everything kind of helps take the edge off time instead of just sitting here and not doing anything for a bit, waiting for this number to slowly tick up. You know, as they say, a watch pot never boils. And actually, I wonder if we could use a compact one. No, because we still need... The, but what we probably want to do is go up like that. And then go underground. Because our goal is, is that if we're going to try and split off, we want to try and not block this for future expansion. Which obviously I'm going to do if I build it right here. However, say that we go a build off this way. And we go to before the chain starts. And problem solved. We just draw them back to behind where the chain starts, and then we can start another chain down here that won't be in the way. And we can still expand this as much as we'd like, pretty much just as long as this doesn't interfere with this, but it's fine distance-wise. So we go ahead and... We're gonna go ahead and start cutting these. And obviously we want to rotate it like that, and rotate you like that, and now we'll have all bottoms. And that's exactly what we want for the first half of the piece. We'll go ahead and do one, four, just a couple of these. In preparation for Connecting it up like that. And then we can... Oh, actually, we want to expand this by one more spot. That way we can force them back onto... Actually, we might not even need to do that anymore. Because we should be able to, in theory, just go like that. And as long as we don't connect it directly into this, we can just combine two of these. And we'll go ahead and just have it output back over here. That way I can do the same thing I was just talking about, just output behind. Don't have to worry about running into blocking it over here. 
Then when we bring a, another one of these, there you go. Completely wrong direction, because I meant to hit, to the toggle it. And look at that, we're already almost at our next goal. Completely wrong. Got those two, and we'll just go ahead and split it like that. Nice. So this is the combiner, which I will be using here shortly to complete our next goal, which I was already working on. I was like, it's nice because it seems to be set up in a way where the next goal happens to be one of the things you should already be working towards. So, as long as you're just taking the time to try and meet those same expectations, uh, you should be able to already get a head start on what you need for the next goal. So one, two. And there we go. We'll go ahead and just stick with those three right now. So the next thing we need are going to be top half green circles. And speaking of, what is our next goal? The chain extractor, which is what I was talking about earlier with the... You can have them all linked together to be in just one output, but boost the actual extraction of... The other ones in this system, which will also help cut down on size constraints like this. Where, like if I wanted to do any more, I'd have to have more splitters, which will then really overall slow down the process because it's all trying to output onto like here and then here. Like if I have this one belt, this one's going here because it's like, okay, well I can't go in here, so I need to go through here. And it's like I can't go through here, I need to go through here. So obviously it's just much, much quicker if everything just inputs into one belt and then you don't have to worry about it. Alright, so we'll go ahead and pull and one, two, three, four. Go ahead and bring that on out. And I feel that when working on stuff like this, it's best to just go ahead and dye the bigger shape. Because what that means is you're spending less time doing the other action. Like if I were to cut these into half and half and then do green dye for each half piece, it would take longer than if I just dye the hole and then I cut and rotate. So that's our goal for right now, is trying to do things as efficiently and waste as little time as possible. All right. Let's see, go like that. And we're going to do yet another one of these boys. Let me just go like that and... Like I said, go ahead and dye the first piece. Bring it on over. Boom, boom. Oh, no. This is going to need to go like that. And we go ahead and output there. And split, split. 
hate. And like I said, the one nice thing about having the compact mergers is I no longer have to do it in any set way. I can just keep expanding as long as I can increase my input enough. And luckily, because the map expands infinitely, if I want, I could just have everything built in one tidy row up and down and then transport everything back to the main base. Uh, but obviously I need to do a little bit of work if I want everything to look more aesthetically pleasing than where it's at right now. But right now I'm honestly totally fine with how everything looks. Um, I'm not trying to do anything too spectacular yet when it comes to the design portion, but that might be something I do in the future if anyone happens to be interested in actually watching that or at least just seeing what I can come up with. And there we go. So now we'll do the same thing that we did before, where we just go ahead and split off into that. And we need to rotate them to the top, so that needs to turn to the right, that needs to turn to the left. And we'll go ahead and One, two, three. That way everything can just output to the left because we will have it just meet right on up with this belt here. Which actually I think I might just have it do that. And just checking video time. Oh wow, I've I've recorded a lot more than I thought I did, so I'll go ahead and set this up, show off the combiner, and then call it there. Might split this up into two smaller episodes, just so that way it's not a lot to watch all at once, but we will see. And like I said, because the green circles are being dyed as a whole, we just we have a lot more to work with. not having to do a lot more like I'm not having to waste more time just by having things be uh, having to have things cut multiple times or anything like that uh, there we go and go ahead and do just one more One, two, not one for this to be in there, so that was done. Uh, split, scissor, and up, or flip, and there we go. And we are off to the races. And now, in order to do the combiner, you've seen this before. Since this takes two inputs and one output, we just have it go like that, and there we go. We now have. Like, we now have it just producing these shapes. And we can bring it all the way back. I think actually what I'm going to do is since I'm not using this to make the red circles anymore, we can just go ahead and delete all of this. Delete all of that. And that opens up a lot more space to work with. And go ahead and route it right back into our base. And there you go. Like I said, it just takes our input, takes our two inputs, combines them together, and since these are half shapes, it'll always combine them the same way. We don't have to worry about uh, the way that it stacks, because later on you'll see, there's no examples of it right now, but later on you'll start seeing like blue square with white circle in it or something like that. So you have to make sure that the base, the base square is down here and then the circle's over here. Uh, 
Uh, something's not getting turned right. Uh, that would be why. Uh, so in other words, I, I, I'm a little dumb on that end. I totally missed the rotators, but... Uh, boom. Boom. And all we gotta do is just... Split it like this one way. And there we go, problem solved. I think. Everything looks good now, but I mean that'll obviously mess it up a little bit for the, the time being, but it's fine, it'll all balance out. Can I clear what's stored? Because clearly these are not right. Um, but who knows, maybe they'll get used later. But alright, so that's a good place to stop it for right now. Um, if you happen to watch through this, thank you very much for doing so. Uh, I am Tyler. As you'll notice, I am now Dr. Fields Good. I am very big on puns, so never forget. Hopefully you'll hear more of that in the future. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more content in the future, and I will see you next time.